Cursor AI is changing the coding space the moment we are speaking. I've literally seen an 8 year old girl creating a full on game on Cursor, so with Cursor truly anyone can get into coding. But even for advanced coders, Cursor is a great way of saving quite a lot of time and engineers at a lot of big companies already do use Cursor. Now in today's beginner tutorial I will give you an outline on how to set up Cursor and how to actually create your first project. If you are expecting a deep dive into complex code this is not a video for you to get started head over to cursor.com now as you can see on the pricing cursor does actually offer a completely free plan which i think is pretty nice you can definitely use this to get started with cursor and additionally on this free plan you're even going to get a pro two-week trial which is pretty nice now when it comes to the paid plans i think the pro plan is well worth it however obviously this is going to come down to your own use cases now make sure to just download cursor right here I'm personally on the Mac, so I've just installed the installer right now. And once you've installed Cursor, this is how it is going to look like. Now we are going to get into this later on. For now, it's only important to know that you are on the Cursor minus Tutor project. However, make sure to also head over to the settings right here. Right here, you can see that right now I do have a pro trial. We can then actually also set rules for AI if you do want to. And something which I actually really like is that under models right here, you can basically put in your API keys, so even if you don't want to go for Cursor Pro, you can still access the newest version of ChatGPT, for example, if you are going to have a premium OpenAI account. However, please note that this sometimes can actually cost more than Cursor Pro, so make sure to do the math on your own. In my opinion, once again, this is not a buying recommendation, but I think Cursor Pro is well worth it. Now before we can get into the actual coding, we will have to first of all actually set up cursor on our PC. To do that, first of all, if you haven't installed Node.js yet, make sure to do that right now, otherwise all of this isn't going to work. So the first step is going to be to actually put in npm-i. Now if you are on Windows, this is going to be npm install. However, obviously I will also leave you all of the steps in the description down below so that you are going to have an overview on how to actually do this. Now once you do this, I don't know what this is going to put out right here. As you can see, I've actually also I've actually already installed this, so this is up to date, perfect. Now the second step is going to be to basically navigate to your project folder. Now, in our case, I'm just going to put in PWD. This is going to show us the uh, basically navigation before our project. So this would be users and then the name of my user, which would be PC. And, and in my case, I will just have to copy this right here and I will then have to actually put in this exact line. Now, of course, I will also leave you this down below and I will also actually leave you the Windows equivalent down below. Either way, I'm not going to put this in right now as I've actually already set this up, but you will just have to enter this. Next step is going to be to put in npm install react scripts so that you are going to have the correct scripts for cursor. And after that, the final step is going to be to actually launch our private server so that we are going to actually see what we are doing on cursor. So just put in npx react strips start. This is then going to start our local host server. All right, so now that we have our local host right here on the left, we can basically start. Now this local host will show all of the changes that we do to our app in real time. So if we, for example, change the text hello world to hello world one, two, three, this is now automatically going to be updated. Now this is going to be locally stored on your computer. So basically no one can actually access this besides you. Now, when it comes to the actual cursor dashboard, this is basically based off Visual Studio. However, if you have no coding experience, this may look somewhat intimidating. So let me quickly outline all of the different features which you will have to know to basically understand this. So right here on the top, we basically do have our project. This would be the cursor tutor project. And we can actually also see this right here on the left. We are then also going to have the option to add new files, add new folders, refresh the explorer, and we can actually also search for different things. We can use source control, and this is really nice, as this is basically based off Visual Studio, we can always add any kind of code which we want to. So you can, for example, install the live server app. However, I'm not going to do that right now, so let's head back to our project. 
So right here we are then going to see the source files, which is going to be index.js as well as package.json. Now these two JSON files are basically just going to be used to basically store all of the dependencies as you can see right here. So I'm not going to dive into that right now, let's rather open up the index.js file. Now the index.js file is the file where cursor right now by default is going to store all of the different code lines. Now this is actually going to condense everything like rendering, CSS and so on, which is a bit impractical, especially for bigger projects. But as for today's tutorial, I'm just going to use it as it is, as it is way simpler to do this if you are just starting out. However, either way, whenever there is a new file actually needed, Cursor is going to tell you to add that file and it is also going to tell you why, but more on that in just a second. For now, to actually access the AI functions, you will simply just have to select certain lines of code and you are then going to have the chat option right here. So if you don't know what is going on in a certain area, you can for example just highlight this and you can then ask what is happening here. Now obviously as this is just a hello code line, you most likely can understand this even if you have zero coding knowledge, but for more advanced projects this definitely is super useful. So right here on the right you are then basically going to see the explanation and then it also says this is a minimal React application setup serving as a starting point for building a more complex React application. The hello world message is typically replaced with complex components. So this is just a great starting point which you can now actually use. So let's now actually open up the hello world function right here again uh, and now actually let's let's change this up. So let's for example say that we do want to change the font of this. The default font doesn't really look nice, so let's actually change this to the inter font. In this case what we would have to do is to once again select the code, then click on chat and let's now actually say change the font to inter. Now please notice that you can actually also change the model right here, however I would recommend you to actually leave it at the default because cursor most of the time is going to know which model is going to work the best. So I'm just going to click on chat right now and this is now going to take a couple of seconds and now we are going to have our code right here. So once we are now going to actually apply this, this is going to show us the code and basically the line which has gotten added and we can now actually accept this. And then right here it says we've added an import for a CSS file. Now you need to create a new file called index.css. So in this case to do this just click on new file and then name this index.css. Now that we have opened this up, we can just say apply right here, we can then continue and now this usually is going to take a couple of seconds and this is now actually going to generate the code inside this file. We can now see all of the new lines added and we can now actually accept this. So when we are now going to open this up on our site and once we are now going to save the index.js file, you can see that the font now successfully has been changed to the inter font. And that's basically how you can actually customize the code. More on that later on, let's now actually say that you do want to create a more complex site. So let's for example go over how to code something like a snake game. In this case, this is basically going to be the same process all over again. Simply just select the code, then put in command plus L and now you are going to have the chat function once again. I'm just going to now put in create a snake game in the 8-bit style, also display the high score and make the button round and black, use the inter font. So now let's actually see what this is going to come up with. And now we do have the correct code right here, which we can then actually apply to our project. And this is what it is now going to look like. We do have our snake right here in the middle, which we can actually um, navigate with the arrow keys. And we do have different kind of fruits, um, which we can actually eat, I guess. And um, now let's quickly see what my high score is going to be. Alright, so I'm now at 35, however I've just realized that you basically cannot die inside this snake game. So obviously cursor isn't always perfect, so we will have to actually change this. To do so, I'm just going to open up the chatbot and I'm then actually going to select everything right here and I'm going to say make it so that whenever the snake touches itself, the game ends. And now this is basically going to analyze all of the uh, code and this is basically now going to add the code that is necessary to actually add this feature. Additionally, one thing which actually is really nice, you can edit this and you can then actually also add other files onto this. 
So if you, for example, do want to customize the styling of something, in that case, it would also make sense to add a CSS file so that cursor is going to print out the correct styling options. In my case, I'm just going to apply this right here. I'm going to accept this and let's now actually see if this is going to work. So as you can see, now it's game over as I've basically eaten myself. So now this game actually is fully functional. Now, of course, this snake game, snake game is just a stupid example and you can really take this wherever you want. Obviously, cursor is perfect for beginners who are just starting out, who maybe haven't coded yet, but also for experienced guys, this is actually a great way of actually saving quite a lot of time and you won't have to do the unnecessary work yourself. And this also is great to, for example, find problems when debugging and so on. I'm also currently planning to make more in-depth and more advanced tutorials on how to set up a website, how to for example build up an app using cursor and so on. So make sure to like and subscribe to stay tuned for that. Additionally, if you have any more questions, make sure to leave them down below and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible.